Tick bites in Tennessee are more than just a pain in the butt. They can spread illnesses that affect thousands every single year. Today, we're breaking down ticks in the southeastern U.S., the diseases they carry, and what to watch for if you get bitten. Did you know that any tiny tick bite you get could possibly change your health forever? Ticks are small, blood-sucking little parasites that attach to humans and animals. It's a huge health concern in Tennessee and the southeastern U.S. because warm climate equals a perfect breeding ground breeding ground for ticks. Some of the most common ticks in the southeastern U.S. is the dog tick, the deer tick, and the lone star tick. You'll often see the dog tick on hiking trails, tall grassy fields, or sometimes even attached to your pet, aka dog tick. Dog ticks are a known vector for Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, which is something that we keep a close eye out on year-round when patients present with fatigue, body aches, weird rash on their hands and their feet, fever, and generalized feeling unwell, something that we typically like to consider in our differentials, diagnosis of what could be going on with you. The deer tick is a lot more complicated to find because it's a lot smaller than the dog tick or the lone star tick. The deer tick is the main vector for Lyme disease, which is something that we see a lot more in New England and the Northeast rather than in the Southeast, but it is still a possibility, although less common, and something that we need to consider when exploring tick-borne illnesses. Now that we've talked about the different types of ticks that we see in Tennessee and in the Southeast, let's talk about the illnesses that they bring a little bit more. There are four, actually five, main tick-borne illnesses in Tennessee and the Southeast that we need to be on the lookout for. Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Ehrlichiosis, and Alpha-Gal Syndrome, and then one that doesn't have like a true known cause, but we do have an idea that it is transferred by ticks, is STARI. STARI is just a fancy acronym for Southern tick associated rash illness. Sorry. Like I mentioned before, Lyme disease, a lot more common in New England, not as much in the Southeast, but something that we still like to keep on our radar. Symptoms include for Lyme disease, body aches, chills, fatigue, fever, joint pain. Um, rashes are super common in tick-borne illnesses and one of the hallmark signs that we look for depending on uh, what tick we're concerned about. So for Lyme disease specifically, you're looking for that bullseye rash. Honestly, most of the symptoms for tick-borne illnesses are very similar. The big distinction, like I said, is the rash. And so with Lyme disease, you get the bullseye rash. With Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, you get a rash that is on your hands and your feet. And a lot of the time it can be diffuse all over your body, but specifically on your hands and your feet because there are very few rashes that will present on your hands and your feet. And Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is one of those. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is something that you want to catch early and as soon as possible because it can pr progress and become detrimental quickly. Now, alpha-gal syndrome is not actually a tick-borne illness. It is actually an intolerance that humans can get after the tick transfers that antibody to humans, and then they become, I guess you could say allergic, allergic to red meat, and have can have anywhere from mild symptoms to severe anaphylactic, could even kill you symptoms. Alpha-gal is caused by the Lone Star Tick, which is one of that we're seeing on the rise a lot more in Tennessee recently, so it's something to keep your eye out for. Ehrlichiosis, another tick-borne illness caused by the Lone Star Tick, is of concern in Tennessee as well, and it's something that we see often. Similar types of symptoms with ehrlichiosis, like you would see with other tick-borne illnesses, um, but you're not going to see that bullseye rash or that rash that you can get on the hands and the feet like you can with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. What makes tick-borne illnesses tricky is that they can oftentimes present as symptoms like an upper respiratory infection or the flu or COVID. You just generally are not going to get upper respiratory symptoms with these types of symptoms or with these types of illnesses like tick-borne illnesses. So you got COVID, you likely have sore throat, runny nose, cough, congestion, headache, etc. With tick-borne illnesses, you're more apt to see fatigue, body aches, joint pain, fever, rashes like we talked about. And so it is really important to identify have you been at risk for a tick bite recently? Have you been hiking? Have you been out in high grassy fields? Have you traveled anywhere recently? Have you had any ticks recently that you've had to remove? All of these are important questions to consider when your symptoms are starting this way without any runny nose, sore throat, cough, congestion, so on. Tick-borne illnesses, definitely treatable if you catch them early enough. If you don't catch them early enough, they can cause a lot of long-term complications that we'll cover in a couple of series from now. So, super important. If you have a tick bite and then a couple of days later you develop a fever and a rash, get seen ASAP. Very, very important. Treatment early with antibiotics that are appropriate for the type of illness that you have can prevent long-term complications that could legitimately affect the rest of your life. So in summary, 
Ticks are common in Tennessee and they can carry illnesses that can be dangerous to you. Next time we'll cover what to do to prevent tick bites, what to do if you get a tick bite and how to remove them appropriately. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends and family. You can also click the link for part two in this series. See you next time.